Hi, in this video we're going to look at some PCBs from JLC PCB and this is for a little project that my wife has set me um, and basically Camden's got a little play kitchen from Ikea and it has a built-in oven um, but it's all uh, doesn't do anything it's all uh, just made of wood so she'd like me to make it a little bit more realistic so we've got some PCBs here uh, which are going to form sort of a front panel for the pretend oven and it'll make the light come on in the oven and also have a little timer on the front and some buttons to go with it. So we've got some black PCBs from JLC PCB and we've also got a couple of stencils to go with it. So here we have the PCBs, you can see we've got the really nice matte black finish again with the white silk screen and then we've also got the immersion gold finish and this is sort of the front panel for the pretend oven so we've got some seven segment displays which are going to sit on here like this and these are from LCSC so here's the part number if you're interested in these but it's got a common anode with blue LEDs um, so we'll be able to have the, the displays on the front here there's a couple of passives at the bottom uh, just because I couldn't fit them on the other side uh, and then basically we've got um, a display driver a PIC microcontroller a couple of transistors here for um, some lights as well uh, and then we've also got a pin header here which is going to go off to some switches. Right, so the plan is that basically this is going to be the front panel display and then there's going to be four of these little aluminium push button switches. So these are from Banggood and they weren't very expensive at all and they've got illuminated blue rings and an illuminated blue power symbol which looks really nice. Um, so there's going to be four of these on the front panel along with this display and the idea is basically you push the button and the display will do something uh, and the oven light will come on uh, for a set period of time. And then we've got a couple of stencils here, so one for the component side of the board. Um, so there's nothing too complex on this PCB, but given the cost of these stencils, it's uh, you know really cost effective to build your project using these. Uh, and then I've got another one just for the top side. Uh, whether or not this will be possible to do both sides, uh, we'll find out. Because um, the risk is that obviously you solder one side and then when you're heating this side up, the components drop off. Um, but this side's not too complex, you can probably solder that by hand if needed. So the design is quite simple, basically all we're doing is driving six, seven segment displays and we're going to multiplex those. Then we've got some open collector transistor outputs. Uh, one of them is to simulate the oven light, so I bought these LED modules from Banggood and you just apply 12 volts and they light up, um, they've got all the current limiting and everything built into them. So we've got one that's going to simulate the oven light and then one that's going to have some under cabinet lighting to light up the kitchen worktop. Um, so I'm just going to chop uh, these, we only need one in the oven and the other four can go um, as the under cabinet lighting. So we've just got an open collector transistor arrangement with a base resistor, it doesn't need anything more complicated than that. And then we've got another header here, uh, which is this one at the bottom, which will go off to the four push buttons. So we've got four push button inputs with pull down resistors. And then we've got four outputs for the LEDs in each of the push buttons, so we can illuminate those. Um, and then we've got a basic linear regulator for the 5 volt logic on the board, uh, just using a 7805 and a couple of capacitors. We've got our in circuit programming header, which is for the PIC 18F 13K22 microcontroller, um, which is a fairly uh, nice small 8 bit processor. It's got lots of peripherals and stuff built in, uh, ideal for this kind of thing. And then uh, to drive the seven segment displays, we're actually going to use a TM1637, which is um, one of those sort of Chinese um, ICs that you can buy from LCSC. You don't really tend to see them at Farnell and stuff, but this is ideal for this purpose. So it actually is designed to drive six digits. It does all the multiplexing for you, and you just send it some serial commands uh, for what to display on the seven segments. So I'll have to develop a little bit of firmware for this. I, I think there are libraries, um, Arduino libraries, because you can buy modules. Uh, let's see if I've got one. You can buy modules with um, this chip already built onto it for sort of the Arduino um, development environment. So you can buy them like this as little modules. You just send in serial uh, commands and you get the um, whatever you send to it on the display. Uh, but we're going to use the chip directly to drive the maximum of six digits. It also accepts um, push buttons as well, so you can attach a matrix keypad to these um, chips, but we're not doing that in this case. We're just going to use it to uh, display some numbers on the seven segment displays. So we'll just have a quick look at the firmware, and I'm developing this in MPLAB X. 
and using the XC8 compiler from Microchip. So here we've just got the bitmap for all of the numbers that are going to be displayed on this seven segment display. So one means that that segment is going to be illuminated and a zero means it's not going to be. And so we've got the seven segments here and then finally just the decimal point for separating the digits. And then in the main loop we've just got a loop which looks to see if a button has been pressed. Then we've got the display refresh loop here which operates every 500 milliseconds which allows us to flash the colons at uh, two hertz rate. And then finally we've just got the state machine which says what to do if each button is pressed depending on what state it's in. And then in terms of writing to the display driver chip it's pretty straightforward really. So there's a bit of data preparation just to get the data in the right format. But in terms of actual communications, you just need to send it a data command to say that you're about to write to the display register. If you've got switches connected, this is where you might say you're going to do a read from the switch register. And then you send it the address of the first digit that you want to write to, or the only digit that you want to write to. In this case, we start with digit zero. And then we simply just send it the byte for each digit, and then tell it to write that to the display. So a really straightforward bit of firmware, and that gets rid of any of the complications of having to write the multiplexing software and having that interrupt occurring um, all the time. So it really offloads a lot of processing off the chip and uh, that chip isn't very expensive at all, so a nice little bit of hardware uh, to use. So we're just going to clean up the board and then use our usual technique for applying the solder paste to the PCB. Right, so here's the finished PCB and overall I think it looks quite nice. The assembly went quite well. I decided not to use the solder stencil on the top side and I just hand soldered the displays and these 0805s uh, just because I needed to solder the through-hole parts on this side anyway. 
But uh, overall I think it looks quite nice and you saw that the programming was successful so we can install this into the kitchen. Right, so I've assembled the kitchen and we've just got to put the kitchen door on. I cut a piece of acrylic to fit into the hole that I cut out for the display so it looks quite seamless on the front. And I put a 2.5mm connector in the back for the 12 volt supply. So we can plug it in and you can see it uh, displays the time. Then when you turn, press the power button, uh, you get the lights coming on and they stay on for about five minutes. And then you can uh, pretend to turn on the oven or you can set the timer. Unfortunately, I forgot to put a buzzer on this, but when the timer runs out, basically it turns off the light in the oven. Um, so that's a nice little bit of interactive play for Camden. He likes to copy what mummy and daddy do. Uh, he likes watching us cooking so he can have a play along with us while we do that and with things like the PCB from JLC PCB at very low cost and these buttons uh, you know were really cheap as well and so were the lights it makes a little project like this really affordable so hopefully you enjoyed the video I'll put a link in the description to the components that I used and also the equipment um, but hopefully you enjoyed that video and until next time thanks for watching